Hi everyone, this is an introduction to big data architecture video. We will use a very generic reference architecture and talk about various layers in detail. So let's get started. First, we will discuss the different type of sources that can send data. The real power of big data is to ingest tons of data from variety of diverse sources. The data can be classified into structured, semi-structured and unstructured. So, the structured sources can be our traditional systems like Data Warehouse, Data Mart, OLTP and ODS containing your organizational data. Further, they can be CRM or ERP systems and finally exposed APIs. Now, what exactly falls under semi-structured and unstructured data can be debatable. Organizations have their own classification mechanisms we will be using our best judgment. So what can constitute a semi-structured data? Well, no SQL databases to begin with. That's what makes this different from structured data to begin with. Next, log files can be considered as semi-structured since there is some element of structure or patterns induced while logging from a code. Next, an email can be a, another good example since it has header, subject, to CC, BCC fields in structured format and email body in unstructured format. Next, organizations use a lot of spreadsheets. A spreadsheet containing data without any accompanying schema or definition can be classified as a semi-structured data. And finally, HTML, CSV, JSON and XML files are all examples of semi-structured data. Moving on to unstructured data, it gets interesting here. Multimedia groups like images, audio, video can be our very first example. Social media data streams can be our next. Another good example of this category is messaging data like SMS, WhatsApp and chat. Taking this a level further to explore full potential of big data, we can have geo or maps data sensor data and data coming from smart devices like smartwatches, etc. And finally, websites, web pages, online news articles and text in PDFs are all unstructured data. Now that we have discussed sources, let's focus on the big data system side of things by covering the different layers that are there. So how will we structure this conversation? We will cover this conversation in three parts. We will first discuss layers, then its components and finally possible data flows. So let's first understand the different layers that are there in a big data architecture. There can be ingestion layer, data storage layer, analytics layer also known as servicing layers or simply service layer, data consumption layer and finally big data governance layer. Please note that there are multiple ways to build a big data system with or without all or some of these layers. I have here tried to generalize and combine few layers for the sake of simplicity. Since this is a generic reference architecture, focus here is at high level and on learning. Now, two things to note here. First, you must have seen a dedicated processing layer shown in some big data architecture diagrams. Processing is basically moving data from one layer to another. Hence, the processing layers, namely batch and real time, would be overarching these layers that you see. I will be showing these type of processing in the later part of this video. Second, I have combined analytics and servicing layer by showing analytical processing and its pre-computed outputs into one. Also, all on the fly or in memory activities will be shown with the help of arrows. Now. Coming to a second part of the three part conversation, let's discuss the components of these layers starting with ingestion layer. There can be a batch component and there can be a real time or stream component, which is the true differentiator of a big data architecture from a data architecture. Coming to storage layer, there can be traditional relation, relational databases to store structured data and yes, at times semi structured data as well. Then there can be one of many types of NoSQL databases to store structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. And finally, we can have a Hadoop distributed file system, which is a fault tolerant distributed file system. Next one 
is the analytics or serving layer. This is the layer where models and engines run and provide outputs to be utilized by consumption layer, typically on demand. It can have statistical and AI models. It can have recommendation engines like those Amazon product recommendations or YouTube video recommendations. It can have a knowledge graph which is widely used for link analysis and social media analysis. And finally, output of these models and engines which are usually pre-computed views for user queries. Now, talking about data consumption layer, it can have a range of things that an end user or a target system needs. Most likely these are BI dashboards, reporting, data visualization, insights generation, real-time alerting, real-time searching, and query capabilities, and finally downstream systems, which would typically be at an enterprise level. Finally, we have big data governance layer, which is used as here as an umbrella term for data management activities like data auditing, data security, data quality controls, data catalog, metadata management, etc. Please note that a big data system has high chances to fail if big data governance is not done right. Finally, the third part of the conversation is the most interesting one that is possible data flows. Okay, broadly, there could be two flows with variants. These flows are batch and real time. Let's start with the batch side of things. A batch is scheduled, hence periodic, and it should write to a dedicated storage before any analytical activity can happen. It's used for cases where historic data is of significance and where history data needs to be maintained. For push flow, the data is then sent to analytical layer, typically in a scheduled fashion then processed and finally sent to downstream. For pull flow triggered via consumption layer, analytics layer picks up the required data from storage layer, processes and fulfills the request. Now let's talk about real time or stream side of things, which makes this a big data architecture in truest of sense. The first flow here is when a request is catered in real time by in-memory processing with the help of computing a real time view. Typically, this makes use of capabilities hosted at analytical layer, but can function without using those capabilities for a limited number of use cases where speed is everything. A good example of such use case where analytical layer capabilities not required is real time alerting. What we just discussed is real time processing without a serving layer, but there can also be a variant where there is a dedicated serving layer. Now, let's talk about data storage for real-time processing. Even though the data is picked up from online or external source and catered to real quick, if there is a need or requirement, the data can be stored in parallel at a storage layer. So now that we have covered the three topics of our conversation, Let's discuss the final topic for today, which is overarching processing. What you see highlighted is called batch processing. Now, there can be two variants of real time or stream processing. The first variant as highlighted is a dedicated serving layer. The second variant as shown would be the one without a dedicated serving layer. So that's all in this video. If you would like to see more topics covered on big data, do let me know in the comment section which ones. If you like this video and had a good learning experience, then do check out other videos. Do like and share. Also subscribe the channel for latest videos and trends in the world of technology and architecture. See you in the next video.